Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. All right, Vincent from Poughkeepsie, New York. Hey, Mr. DG, what's happening and how are you doing? <laughs> A lot is happening and I'm doing well, Vincent. Thanks for asking. He says, so as an 11 year old, I loved dinosaurs for like ever. And I always wondered what would happen if they never died out. Um, and my big question is if, and I mean a big if, <laughs> Uh, let's say Tyrannosaurus, Spinosaurus, and Giganotosaurus somehow survived the meteorite strike. Yes, I know they probably couldn't, uh, that it, it killed them off, but he wants to know, how do I think they would have evolved? What do I think they would have looked like? P.S. I'm like one of your biggest fans, and it's an honor to even speak to you on a question such as this. Vincent, first of all, it, 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 I appreciate that very much, and I'm glad you're a fan, and I hope uh, I'm able to help you uh, with some of the questions that you've got. So let's answer yours now. What do I think would have occurred if some of these monstrous dinosaurs would have survived at the end of the Cretaceous period? My best guess, based on looking at uh, modern animals and some of the prehistoric animals, is that um, gigantism, that is being huge, usually comes with an awfully heavy price. And when an environment changes dramatically like it did at the end of the Cretaceous, it is the gigantic animals that are impacted the, the most because it's harder to find enough food. It, uh, your body requires a certain amount of oxygen. You always require a certain amount of water. And when times are tough and you can't find that, you're the one that dies out first. So my guess would be those three dinosaurs, those that would have survived this dramatic impact, would have been the smaller of the bunch because they required less. So in my opinion, over a long period of time, I think we would have seen them becoming smaller and smaller uh, in order to survive. Now, you may have seen sort of an uptick in their size at different points of history because, again, the environment changed. There became more food. There became uh, much more plentiful prey. And so size may have been uh, gone up again. But I think you would have kind of seen this up and down growth cycle of these dinosaurs, but I don't think they ever would have reached the sheer size that they did during the Cretaceous because oxygen levels are different now. And again, there's been such a variety of different animals that have come and gone. Uh, my best guess is those three dinosaurs today, if they were alive today, probably would have been more closely related to the size of, oh, I don't know, let's say in between a rhinoceros and an elephant. Uh, I think they would have been around that size. They still would have been big, but I don't think they would have been gigantic. All right, um, uh, Brendan from Morris, New York, my buddy Brendan. Who is the best Tyrannosaurus expert? Robert Bacher, Pete Larson, or Thomas Holtz? Wow, <laughs> this is a cool question. Okay, all three of these men have expertise in different areas of Tyrannosaurus. I think Dr. Robert Bacher is absolutely brilliant. I think he looks at dinosaurs from a different perspective than most others. He kind of uh, looks at them more, I think, from a behavioral point of view. And so I would say that if you asked any one of these three how Tyrannosaurus Rex acted, I think Robert Bacher would be, in my opinion, uh, the best expert, if that's the proper term. Pete Larson has probably, I'm certainly, has excavated more Tyrannosaurus than anybody else on planet Earth. This man knows every inch of a skeleton and knows everything about their structure. Um, Pete also knows a lot, of course, about what he thinks their behavior is. I would say Pete Larson probably excels when it comes to the, the basic structure of the dinosaur, how it's put together, how it moved, the mechanics of it. But then you get to Dr. Thomas Holtz. Uh, Thomas Holtz is a genius when it comes to Tyrannosaurs and all predators in general. Um, he could tell you more things about a Tyrannosaurus rex and its relatives, uh, how it evolved, where it came from. The problem with it is these three men are brilliant when it comes to Tyrannosaurs, but they each have a different expertise in my opinion. I can't choose who of the three I think is the biggest expert because Man, that's tough to do. I mean, all three of these guys know a tremendous amount. Wow. I'd say you'd have to flip a coin if you want a winner, but uh, I can't give you one out of these three because they all excel so much in, in different areas of expertise. Okay, Sky from Fremont, California. Hi, Dinosaur George. How have you been doing? Sky, I've been doing great, and I hope you've been doing well. Um, I have but two questions I want to ask. One, am I the first person to ask a question from Fremont? Yes, you know what, Sky? I think you are. I don't believe I've ever had anybody from Fremont, California write to me, so you are the first. Second, uh, do you think that Pachycephalosaurus was nearsighted like modern-day rhinos? Um, wow, wow, that's an interesting question, Sky. 
Its orbit, that is the spot where the eye goes in the skull, is really large compared to body size and that's usually a sign of bigger eyes, meaning better eyesight. Um, animals that have poor eyesight generally don't have really big eyes because they're not that functional and the way nature works is it's not going to give you something if you're not going to use it. Um, which makes you wonder why uh, senators and congressmen are given brains. <laughs> but boom, boom, thank you folks, I'm here all week. Now the government's probably going to shut this website down, so it's been good knowing you. <laughs> um, because its orbits are really big, I suspect it's the opposite. I suspect that they have very good eyesight. I don't know if anybody has ever done a CAT scan on the brain case of a pachycephalosaur and has ever really looked to see how big the optic lobes of the brain are, meaning how much of the brain is, is committed to vision. I don't know, Sky. That's a great question. Um, maybe you need to continue to do some uh, investigation yourself. And if you find out some information, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, my friend Ray from Corpus Christi, Texas. Ray, it's so good to hear from you, and it was so nice seeing you at the Witty Museum, and it was really cool running to you, uh, to you and your family at the uh, uh, at uh, La Contera Resort where I was speaking that day. That was so cool. He says, "Who would win in a fight, a Gorgonops or, or a pack of Velociraptors?" Well, Gorgonopsians are pretty nasty guys, pretty thick skin, pretty nasty teeth and jaws. The problem is Velociraptors were much more advanced than Gorgonopsians, I think. I think Velociraptors were, were quicker, smarter, faster, certainly had all the necessary weapons to dispatch something like a Gorgonopsian relatively quickly. My guess would be it would be Velociraptors simply because they outclassed the Gorgon. Okay, finally, Jack from Boston, Massachusetts. Hi, George. I drew the T-Rex on Facebook. Hey, I saw that. That was great. I really like that a lot, Jack. You're a great artist. Uh, he said, I'm very happy that you like it. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Okay, my questions are, why do we call T-Rex the king of the dinosaurs? Is it because he's so powerful? Um, actually, the reason why we call T-Rex the king of the dinosaurs is because his name in English means the tyrant lizard king. We, he was given that name. He was given the name Tyrant Lizard King because at the time he was the biggest, baddest meat eater ever known. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because his name has the word king in it, it doesn't mean that he will forever be considered the biggest, baddest, most terrifying predator on earth. It's just that we gave him that name. So uh, his name will always be synonymous with being the king but that's the only reason why he got that name, because at the time he was the biggest, baddest dude known. Now it's true that they found other predators that may be bigger than Tyrannosaurus, but uh, he's still one of the baddest dudes on the planet. And the reason why we call him the king, that's the name they gave him. It's kind of like Elvis. Why do you call Elvis the king? Well, somebody gave him the name the king and it stuck. So anyway, all right, I'm showing my age, Elvis. Most of you people watching this are like, what is an Elvis? <laughs> okay, second, um, uh, he says, my second question is, why am I your fan? The answer is because you are DG. <laughs> Thank you for answering me and good luck for with all the jobs you do, Jack. Jack, <laughs> that's really cool. Thank you very much for being a fan of mine and I'm glad I am DG because if not, I'm going to have to go change all my stationery. <laughs> all right, you guys, listen, it is great talking to everybody. Go to Facebook, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter while you're there. Make sure to look for Jack's T-Rex that he drew. You'll find it on my Facebook page. Until later, practice your reading for you young people. Everybody out there, let's all good... Uh, Let's all good use manners. Let's all use good English. <laughs> and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.